Well, yes, indeed. Uh, to give us perspectives on this subject matter, as you may have seen there, we've got uh, His Excellency Ambassador Bala Sani MNI, who is a former Nigerian ambassador to Mauritania and also a public policy analyst. He joins us on the line from Kano. We also do have uh, Sali Tanko Yakasai, who is the SA media to the governor of Kano State, uh, also joining us from uh, Kano State, but he's in our studios. Gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. But let me start with you, uh, Mr. Tanko Yakasai. On this matter, I, I know you may have seen the lots of reactions about the reasons that the government gave concerning why he was the emir was dethroned but give us your impression now uh, concerning those reasons that the government gave for those who still don't buy it thinking that there's much more to those reasons what do you think i don't think uh, there is uh, much more to the reasons uh, first of all people are allowed to speculate uh, especially in this uh, type of um, uh, situation but the fact of the matter remains, uh, just like uh, in the letter, uh, the press release that was issued yesterday by, by the Secretary to the State Government, which was uh, approved by the Kano State Executive Council, uh, largely uh, the reasons have been uh, due to insubordination. Uh, insubordination by uh, the uh, deposed uh, Emir uh, Sanusi, uh, insubordination to the State Government. Uh, uh, people don't know that uh, for the past uh, almost um, 10 months since the creation of the new uh, four Emirates by the administration of His Excellency Dr. Abla Umar Ganduje. Uh, there hasn't been, uh, you can count the number of, uh, of uh, uh, events organized by the state government, very important events, some are international uh, events, some are very critical uh, events that have been hosted by the state government and uh, which the Emir has been invited and has never uh, attended. I can tell you for one, uh, the, uh, the, the, the luncheon by the Vice President of the um, uh, Basic uh, Free and Compulsory Basic Education, almost uh, we have a lot of uh, international uh, communities that uh, attended that event, but uh, to our surprise, the EMEA was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was uh, not there. So things like this, uh, a lot of uh, insubordinate, insubordinate acts of insubordination that uh, were, were done by His Highness, among other things. So um, people are allowed to say what they, what they have to say, but the fact of the matter remains uh, that uh, this is the reason for this, uh, uh, for this uh, uh, dethronement. Right. Now, I just want to follow up on that. When you say uh, acts of insubordination and other things, one would also ask, a lot of people are wondering, are those reasons enough to dethrone him? Because, I mean, if someone does not attend events successively, you wonder at least there will be a process to that, not just uh, cold turkey uh, dethronement. So the question is, do you think, and you also uh, referenced section uh, 13A to E of the Kano State Emirate, Emirate Law 2019, but the question is, the ones you have listed, are they enough to dethrone him? They are more than enough because they are, these are things that are contained, uh, just like you rightly mentioned in the uh, Kano State uh, Bill Law, uh, uh, which was amended. 2019. They are all uh, listed if you, uh, in the bill. If you look at the bill carefully, uh, insubordination is one of them. Uh, doing acts that are tantamount to the uh, 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 d d d things, things that are tantamount to the destroying the traditional heritage of the Emirate Council <clears throat> uh, are one of, uh, another thing. And uh, doing things that are also against the, the cultures and the values of uh, Kano Kano people and the Emirate Council are all under this. This is a bill. It's under the bill. I think people should uh, find time and go through this bill so that they can understand the implications of all these things. Uh, a law is a law. If you break it, uh, definitely there are consequences to that act. Let, let's bring this to Ambassador Balassani MNI right now. Um, first of all, we'd like to take what's your reaction to the news of the dethronement of. Uh, the Emir of Kano and the replacement. The Oh. 
Uh, Ambassador, the line is uh, a bit faint. We don't know if you could lean towards the towards your microphone or something uh, such that they could hear you a little, a little better. Same problem with me. I don't hear you. But, uh, are you here now? Okay, we're going to keep trying. This is a little low. Well, it's getting better. Can you hear me now? Okay, yes, we can hear you, sir. Go ahead, what sir. What I'm trying to say is that we have a um, uh, view of the speech. It is important to have this and it's Well, we're going to have to call the ambassador back because we can't really hear him. But uh, as soon as we reconnect with him, we'll like to take him. Well, let's go back to um, our guest in Kano. Uh, how is the Kano state government taking on board the reactions that are coming? Of course, for instance, you heard uh, Haji Tofa, former presidential candidate, also say that it's illegal. And of course, you've also heard the reactions from all and sundry former President Obasanjo was quoted to have also said that he didn't deserve to be dethroned. How is the Kano state government taking this on board? Well, the Kano state government is uh, keenly observing all the reactions, but the most important reaction that I want people to take into account is the reaction on the streets of Kano. We all know that uh, we all saw the videos yesterday where people trooped uh, to the streets, uh, particularly around the, uh, the, uh, the Emir's palace, uh, particularly around the, the house of the new Emir's, that's uh, Emir of Kano, the new Emir of Kano, Alleged Amina Adubayaru and that of uh, Bichi, Alleged Nasir Adubayaru, uh, who replaced uh, the Emir of Bichi. So uh, you can, you can, if, you, if you see the videos, if you see the thousands of uh, people that came out celebrating the, uh, their uh, appointments as the new Emirs, you could tell that uh, people in Kano, people on the ground, are 100% uh, in support of this, uh, this, this act. Okay, okay. That, that's what people need to understand. You know, it's not just about uh, attaching sentiments and emotions to, to, to these things. You know, there's a difference between uh, what the outside world is seeing and what we on the ground of, of Kano uh, are seeing, which is contrary to, to if I can take us down uh, back memory. Mr. Tabi Akasai. Just, just pardon me for a minute to, to just jump in. Uh, we need to reconnect back with uh, the ambassador uh, to get his views, his initial views. Uh, I don't think it came through properly. Uh, ambassador, could you go ahead and uh, speak to us now concerning the reasons that were given by the uh, government to dethrone him, citing disrespect, uh, insubordination, not attending some of those meetings, and even the corruption allegations against him? You see, I have the opinion that... Um for you to have a picturesque view of the situation, it is very important to have an understanding of the 1976 local government reforms under General Obasanjo, which altered the role played by traditional rulers. That law insulated them from politics and regarded them as advisors on local government and local government matters, culture, religion settlement of disputes, and promotion of peace uh, generally. Now, positions of leadership in the new local government setup has to be contested in elections. You will remember that local governments became third year of government with the entrenchment of democracy uh, in the system, and people were at that time encouraged to participate in running their local affairs as leaders. Now, traditional rulers accepted their new roles with reluctance, if I may say so. As they used to be the alpha and omega of the system before. Uh, there were uh, often uh, frictions among the local government dignitaries in carrying out their respective uh, tasks. So the situation continued and became more tense after the military left the scene. Under Governor Rimi, for example, 
his uh, relationship with the Emir of Kano Adobayero left much to be desired. He indeed uh, um, uh, uh, created more emirates, which people see as an attempt by him to whittle down the influence of the Emir. Subsequently, Governor Sabu Bachinzo abolished uh, the emirates he, he created or he, he established. So it is under such prevailing atmosphere that um, Amy Alamidu Sanusi um, uh, succeeded Ado Bayro under two different governors, the uh, Alajirabi Konkoso as well as uh, Governor Ganduji. In my view, the academic uh, attainment and the intellectual ability of um, Emir Lamida Sanusi made it a bit difficult for him to play the role of a mayor advisor. And uh, this translates, or oh, this is the whole reason why they are on collision course with the government. Uh, later, political partisanship crept in, and um, that bred feelings of um, disloyalty, disrespect, insubordination, and led to his dethronement in a, in a nutshell. In other words, Ambassador, <clears throat> you, do you think that yes. you know, uh, this was then the outcome, eventual outcome, and so his determinant was inevitable? Uh, it couldn't have been inevitable if they had understanding. But um, the Emir, uh, I don't think, was uh, not bowing to the administrative control of the uh, government. And the government thought that was uh, a disrespect to constituted authority, and they have to make him to bow. Do you think it was a justifiable position for the Emir to have taken, given that uh, the role of the Emir is at the discretion and approval of the governor of the state? As, as I pointed out, it was advisory, but I don't think he was uh, willing to accept that role. And this is because of his uh, uh, level of education, you know. That is, make, uh, that is what uh, makes it uh, very, very difficult and created a tense situation. Right, Ambassador, just hang on a minute. Let me just uh, uh, get back to uh, uh, Mr. Tanko Yakasai to get his reaction on this. Well, you heard the Ambassador uh, talking about giving us a little bit of a background on why this eventually happened. He, you, I, I hope you heard, he also suggested that, well, given those political partisanship, so for those who then think that there's politics connected to this, so it wasn't just because it was insubordinate, uh, there was disrespect and insubordination. It had its roots, politically speaking, given what happened in the last elections. Absolutely. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, we as a government are battling with is that a lot of the things that um, uh, the EMEA did were things that uh, uh, are not uh, on record to present as facts or as proof uh, to the, for the world to see. Uh, another thing is that uh, some of these things, you know, we have to just, uh, the governor, for instance, His Excellency Dr. Abla Umur Gonduja is very accommodating. Uh, I can tell you that in the first about five years that the governor has been, uh, uh, four years that the governor has been the, 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 the yeah, almost five, you know, uh, he issued only one query to the Emir of Kano, Sanusi. Uh, but uh, the few years that uh, Emir Sanusi with, uh, was, the, was, was Emir with the, late, with the former governor of Kano State, Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso, Rabi Musa Konkoso issued over uh, between three to four queries to Emir Sanusi. A lot of people don't, uh, don't know this. If uh, Kanduja can, can be able to, to, to accommodate all the 
or other things coming from the deposit of Kano, Sanusi for five, for almost five years and just issue one query, uh, then that means uh, he's a very tolerant uh, person. So that is what we have been uh, dealing with as a government. But again, pardon me to jump in, but if you say, well, he's been very accommodating, but you also admitted uh, that, well, it has its roots, politically speaking, it then comes across to those who are watching thinking, so does that then mean that MES have got to be seen and not heard because if he was that vocal and the government didn't like it. And besides, even the panel that was set up to investigate him for corruption, citing the provisions of Kano State Embury Council Special Fund Law 2004, he said they got an injunction. The court quashed those indictments, but the panel insisted that they were going to go ahead with all of those. So some said, look, it was just a matter of time that the government had made up its mind on what was going to happen. Let, let me tell you something. Is there is no, the problem is not that of being heard, you understand? Because the governor has made himself available not just to the EMEA, but to anybody that is willing to come and advise. And on several occasions, the governor has been able to take this advice into, into consideration. So that means the governor has, uh, the EMEA, let's uh, EMEA Sonosa had access to come and advise the governor if he wanted to. But unfortunately, all he, he only finds... Uh, 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 he only finds that uh, he only finds four podiums and stage uh, as the only means to advise the government, uh, which is not uh, which is not right. So you can you can try to uh, uh, say uh, or portray it as as political or whatever you can call it, but the fact of the matter remains that you know uh, no no one would uh, would would allow uh, such uh, disrespect uh, and, and and open criticism when you have not come to me to let me give you for example one of the first issues that started and uh, that is on the issue of the Kano metro metro uh, proposal for the uh, metro line in Kano state the emir had access to come to button again I have to button again, pardon me, just so we can get Ambassador Sonny to uh, round off on this. Now, uh, there's been so much reactions, and we've talked about that largely, but then people are looking for the way forward. On one hand, there's the way that they thought the government treated uh, the former emir. They thought he wasn't right, the whole exiling and banishment. On one hand, what is your opinion about that? Do you think that was the way to go? Ambassador Sonny, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear us? The line is very faint. Uh, it would be better if next time you invite me to your studio. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take, take you up on that. We'll take that rain check. All right. Well, so let me just uh, <laughs> round off with... I'm not, I'm not hearing really. All right, but we'd like to thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Bala Sonny, his uh, former Nigerian ambassador to Mauritania, and also a public policy analyst. Perhaps next time we'll see him, we'll be in the studio. But let's just round off with uh, uh, Mr. Tanko Yakasai. And on a final note, the way that the former emir was treated was also a major concern for a lot of people. Do you think he could have been handled better? He was offered to be, to be handled better. I think... Uh, um, uh, they wanted uh, it to be a quiet thing. Uh, that is the that is the that is the standard. That is the law that uh, the, the throne or the post emir, you know, has to has to leave the state. You know, that is what is uh, that you know that was what has uh, happened in the in the past in situations like this. But uh, I think uh, I don't know what happened in the palace that uh, got the delay. Uh, the emir wasn't at, in the initial stage, wasn't willing to, to, to leave the palace, and that was why uh, we saw what we saw with the security forces and uh, what have you. Uh, and, uh, if, if he had, uh, we have, we had gone willingly, I don't think I would have been able to, to, to see that reaction that we saw from the, the security apparatus. So, so the, 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 uh, the situation was, uh, even though it was a bit tense initially, but it wasn't uh, for a very long time, and uh, uh, as you can see, Kano now is very peaceful. Even uh, since yesterday, everybody is going about his business, and uh, uh, we feel that uh, uh, this this is here to stay. God willing. Okay. Well, even though Mr. Yakasa, many say that look, this is about 2023. That this is the implication of what the the this is how they read it, but. I'm sure we'll get back to you on this same subject matter and get more reactions. So we've been speaking with um, uh, Saliu Tanko Yakasa, who is the SA media to the governor of Kano State. We thank you for your time this morning. We also did have Ambassador uh, Balasani, 
who was a former Nigerian ambassador to Mauritania.